So this tutorial is going to be covering how to weld batteries, specifically with a capacitive discharge welder and a WH2125A, two standing for two electrode holders descending at a time. 125 for the diameter of the electrodes, and then A standing for automated, or it's pneumatically driven in this case. So, for battery welds, we recommend using our battery electrodes, which have been milled down on an offset so that they can be seated right next to one another. So the best way is to make sure that these electrode holders are close to one another. If they are not, we can come to the side and loosen up one of these, probably both of these, electrode holders, and then you should be able to, with some effort, rotate that in. So, get that focused in. So now that that's set, we're going to put both electrodes into our electrode holders. And if they don't drop in like that, we can loosen up this bolt in order to help do that. If they're crooked like this, the bolts on either side near the front right here are in charge of the rotation of this one. So if I loosen up this, I should be able to tap that just like so, and you can see that that electrode is now rotating in. I'm going to rotate these electrodes so that they're close to one another. We're going to change that view so we can see that the business end of these electrodes are sitting pretty close to one another. And so I'm happy with that distance. If we want it to be closer, and so forth, we can adjust as needed, but in this case, I'm going to tighten up this screw to lock that into place. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lift these both up so that they're about an eighth of an inch. Again, these are eighth of an inch electrodes so that we can borrow another spare electrode. And I can use that as a measuring tool. And once those are both set to where I want it to be, I can tighten these both up. So let me raise that up, get that other one set. Something to note is these move independently from one another. So it doesn't need to be super exact, but I like to have a metric to use when I'm setting this up. Now that that is set up, we're going to go up to our, our spring settings so that we can get the pressure that's being delivered by these two electrodes to be identical to what we're expecting to see. Again, eighth inch electrode from the top of what I'm wanting to weld to the bottom of this electrode is one. So if I remove this, then we have the length of this battery plus the eighth inch. And that's not ideal because there's only about one inch of travel for this. All right, going to the, the sliding plate of our weld head, you'll see that there's some hash marks. And if I push up on this, it will expose more of those. And so what these numbers mean, and this one's barely seen, but it's 0 0.125, which is, this is in inches. So what this is saying is the relative pressure is based off of the distance that we measured previously. In this case, we have it set to 0 0.125. If I were to have my work travel half inch, I would slide it down to the, to the half inch mark. 
and so on, right? If it was an inch of travel, then we'd have that. Now you'll see that these, if I bump this up, these brass indicators show me relative to these hash marks on the faceplate, how much pressure is going to be delivered to the parts during the weld based off of how far it needs to travel. There'll be less pressure delivered if it has to travel more. So in this case, for convenience, I'm going to have it all the way to the top, which is our 1 8 inch. And then for batteries, I like to actually have it about in the middle. So I'm going to loosen this up. So the middle of our battery indicator, or our, our pressure indicator rather, we can see the middle of that brass piece has like a line. So we're going to be about there. And then we're going to loosen up the left side until it's about the same as well. Perfect. So this is ideal starting pressure for making battery welds using five thousandths nickel, which is the industry standard for remanufacturing or nickel-based battery packs. So let's go back down to our battery and make a few welds. Regardless of the CD welder that you're using from Sunstone, I like to start lower than I think as far as my power is concerned, and then I adjust up from there. So as an example, let's say I don't know what the settings would be for this 5,000 nickel shim. I'm going to set it to, we'll say, 50 total stored energy. And then for this experiment, I'm going to leave off pulse 1. And then with pulse 2, send it to 50 watt seconds. All right, so I'm going to now engage a weld so we can see what that looks like. So we can see a weld occurred, but not enough power to make a weld. So then I would follow the procedure of turning it up. So no adhesion whatsoever. So what I would do is I'd go up to 70 and change my pulse 2 to 70 as well and conduct another test. Again, no adhesion. So then I would go up to 90. And I would repeat this process until I got a weld that I liked. And this can vary based off of the contacting surface, the thickness of your tab, and so forth. Uh, the pressure that's being delivered as well can make a difference. Rotate that out. So we got some adhesion there. Good. So we didn't leave nuggets behind, but we left some, some material behind. So we're going to change one more thing. So we can see there's quite a bit of sticking. And this is one thing that I see often, right? Nickel is just going to be sticky, and copper is the best option for this. So again, I got ribbons to show up on this, full-size nuggets, right? So. How can we improve upon the sticking here? There's a couple things that we can do. We can have this electrode closer. Right? If I do reduce the power just a little bit to what it was prior to this latest test, again, I, I like to rotate it out. One thing I want to point out is see that right there. If I see copper deposits, then I can actually go up to my weld head and lower that brass indicator one or two notches on the side where we see copper deposits, especially if these are brand new and clean. 
and see if we like that better. Because what's happening is it's getting too hot on this one side. So let's run another test. It's still leaking some. So I might have a little rough spot there and I may need to sand that down. And what that looks like is I have some 800 grit sandpaper and I can just sand it just like this. And again, I'll just kind of take any burrs off. I don't need to do this for this because they're brand new electrodes, but sometimes you'll need to follow these steps to remove any burrs that may have occurred over the course of welding it. That looks good. Let's just get this back side. Okay, gorgeous. So now we can come in and attempt that one more time. And I'm seeing no copper deposits. I'm seeing good welds. Let's validate that by full test. Okay, so nugget and slightly less, but there's still a nugget there. So again, I'm going to come, come up in power like I was before. Let's see if I can get a better adhesion that meets my expectations and hopes for the project. Again, I'm seeing no sticking. And we get that ribbon. Perfect. We can make minor adjustments as we see fit in order to achieve a good weld. It is common for companies as a redundancy to make multiple welds on the same tab just in case. So in this case, do a weld here. Again, twist it, do another weld, twist it. And then I got two sets of welds as a redundancy, just in case the first one, for whatever reason, fails. But again, I'm cutting that off completely. There's a full tab left behind. If you have any questions, please reach out to us as we're happy to help.